So you have an A plus, and you have, say, a bigger, say, K plus. Which is going to attract more waters? What is the charge? Which, is, which has more charge density, Na plus or K plus? Why? It's Sorry? It's larger. So it, it is larger and has the same charge. So the density is what? More or less? So you have one cup of sugar and a gallon of water versus 10 gallons of water. Which has more dense sugar syrup? The one. So when you have less volume, the density becomes more. So you have one charge and a smaller volume in sodium plus. The same one charge is distributed in the greater volume in K plus. So this one has less charge density. Smaller things will have more charge density. Bigger things will have less charge density, generally. So when you have a smaller molecules with higher charge density, its hydration is going to be that much more. So the hydration shell that a smaller cation forms is much larger than the hydration, hydration shell that is formed by a bigger cation because of charge density. It's reversed. Okay? So that is one thing. So, so when you, when you, we'll, we'll talk about this thing, but it's, you have to keep in mind. So charge density becomes really important. Understanding the sizes, isoelectronic species, and to Z by E becomes really important. Not just for like comparing the sizes, but for many different kinds of purposes, okay? Now, we have all these um, Goldschmidt's rules of uh, substitution in which we try and understand when a cation can get in all these different structures. Okay? When can you get in into a trigonal or like a tetrahedral and things like that? One thing is the size. So if the size falls between these, that is going to fit. So that is one substitution rule. So that you have to form, like you have to be in, in that in that range for that cation to fit inside that anion crystal structure. Okay. I'm not going to write it, I'm just reading it out. Um, so extensive replacement happens and you can, I can, you, and you can Google this, you'll find 100 different sites with talks about Goldschmidt's rule of substitution. Just write that down, you can find that. Okay, read, read, that, read about it in like anywhere you want. But the thing is, I've written some points here. So extensive replacement between two elements if their ionic crystal radii is plus minus 15%. So if you have two elements, one can be replaced by the other if their sizes are between one, like 15 plus minus. So if someone is one angstrom in size, some element is, say, one angstrom in size, it can be easily be replaced by other element which has a size plus minus 15. So 0.85 angstroms or 1.15 angstroms. It's like the plus minus 15 boundary. And why is that? Because elements are squishy. That, that orbitals are like squishy. That's why that plus minus 15. But not that much. It's just 15%. Okay, so that's one rule. Okay, if there is one unit charge difference, so say you have calcium 2 plus and magnesium, calcium 2 plus and Na plus, for example. They, they can substitute each other. So Na plus can be substituted by something that has more charge, or a more charge can be substituted something that has less charge. That can, that can do if they have like similar in size, plus minus 15 in that order, but there will be a charge disbalance there, right? So that charge disbalance has to be taken care of by some other substitution, okay? So, so that the entire thing remains neutral, okay? Now, if there are two competing ions for one site, the higher charge density 
will get preferred because it will form a stronger bond. So if, if there are like if two elements, two, two cations are fighting for one site, the one that has more charge density is going to be preferred because of the obvious reason, more stable. Now, there's this fourth rule that Goldschmidt did not give, but, but, but was given later by Ringwood, another great scientist. So we have a, a mineral named after him, Ringwoodite. Uh, so he said, if there is, if there, so if sometimes there are groups of cations that have the almost same size, almost or and the same charge. So Na plus and copper two plus, they have the same size, and they have very similar size, and they have same charge. Sometimes they do not replace each other. Why do you think that is? Okay, so I said sometimes when you have the same sizes, you can easily replace each other. Sometimes when you have same sizes, same um, charges, you can replace each other. Even when you don't have like the, the same size sometimes, you can replace it, replace them, given that the charge neutrality um, is maintained. But, so say for example, you have NaAlSi3O8, something like that, okay? This, I think this is albite. Um, this Na will never be replaced. So this is an Na plus in the structure, somewhere in that structure. This Na, will never be replaced by a copper two plus. Although the sizes are very similar, the charge is exactly the same and it's plus one, but still it doesn't happen. So it, it kind of refutes the first three things that Goldschmidt said. What's the difference between Na plus and copper two plus? See them, visualize them in the periodic table. Where is Na? On the left hand side in the alkali matter. Where is copper? It's so like in the D, D block somewhere in here. What is their basic difference? If their sizes are the same and the size is the same, what can be different between them? What's the, what's the properties that change when you go from, what's the property that determines whether you'll have a covalent bond and an ionic bond? What's that property? It is, but what's the basic property? What's that? Yes, it's the electronegativity. These two are very different in their electronegativity. So when you have different electronegativities, basically, if this is forming a certain type of ionic bond with this crystal structure, this thing will tend to now form a covalent bond, which is not good. That will destroy this structure. So because the electronegativity differences are high, even though their sizes and the charges are the same, they will not substitute. Okay, these are the four rules. Okay, uh, we'll go into the geochemical classifications, but let's pause and um, think, uh, <clears throat> discuss about this third problem set that I'm going to give. <clears throat>